Awozu Billa He Minish Shaitan Nirajim. I seek refuge in Allah from Shaitan the Rejected One. Bismillah Hir Rahman Nurrahim. By utilizing the name of Allah, Most Compassionate, Ever Merciful. Introduction Surah El Anfal, Name Taken. The Surah takes its name El Anfal, the bounties, from the first verse. The Period of Revelation. It was revealed in year two after Hydra following the Battle of Badr, the first battle between Islam and Kufr. As it contains a detailed and comprehensive review of the battle, it appears that most probably it was revealed at one and the same time. But it is also possible that some of the verses concerning the problems arising as a result of this battle might have been revealed later and incorporated at the proper places to make it a continuous whole. At any rate, in the whole Surah there is nothing that might show that it is a collection of a couple of discourses that have been patched up together. Historical Background Before reviewing the Surah, it is worthwhile to consider the events that led to the Battle of Badr during the first decade or so of the prophethood at Mecca. The message had proved its firmness and stability. This was the result of two things. First, the messenger, Salallahu alayhi wa alayhi wasallam, who possessed the highest qualities of character, was performing his mission with wisdom, foresight, and magnanimity. He had shown by his conduct that he had made up his mind to carry the movement to a successful end and, therefore, was ready to face all sorts of dangers and obstacles in the way. Secondly, the message was so charming that it attracted the minds and hearts of the people irresistibly towards itself, so much so that all obstacles of ignorance, superstition, and petty prejudices failed to check its advance. That is why the Arab upholders of the ways of ignorance, who looked down upon it in its initial stages, had begun to reckon it as a serious menace during the last period of the stay of the Holy Prophet, Salallahu alayhi wa alayhi wasallam at Mecca and were bent on crushing it with all the force at their command. But in spite of the above a mentioned strength, the movement still lacked certain things to lead it to victory. First, it had not yet been fully proved that it had gathered round it a sufficient number of such followers who not only believed in its truth, but also had such an intense devotion to its principles, that they were ready to expend all their energies and all that they possessed in the struggle for its success and establishment so much so that they were ready to sacrifice their lives in the fight against the whole world itself even though they should be their own nearest relative. It is true that the followers of Islam had endured the severest persecutions at the hands of the Quraysh of Mecca and had given a good proof of the firmness of their faith and their strong relation with Islam. Yet further trials were required to show that Islam had succeeded in acquiring such a band of followers which considered nothing dearer than its ideal and was ready to sacrifice life for it. Secondly, though the voice of Islam had reached every part of the country, its effects were yet scattered and its acquired strength was spread here and there. It had not yet gathered sufficient force essential for a decisive conflict with the old established order of ignorance. Thirdly, Islam had yet no home of its own and had not established itself firmly anywhere in the land where it could consolidate its power and make it a base for further action. For the Muslims were scattered all over the country and were living among the unbelievers as aliens whom their bloodthirsty enemies wanted to uproot from their own homes. Fourthly, the Muslims had not yet had an opportunity to demonstrate practically the blessings of the system of life based on Islam. There was neither any Islamic culture nor any social economic or political system, nor were there any established principles of war and peace for their guidance. Therefore the Muslims had no opportunity for demonstrating those moral principles on which they intended to build their entire system of life. Nor had it been proved on the touchstone of trial that the Muslims as a community were sincere in their proclamation of the message. Allah created opportunities for making up these deficiencies. During the last four years or so of the Prophet's stay at Mecca, the voice of Islam had been proving effective at Yathrab, and the people for various reasons had been accepting the message more readily than other clans of Arabia. So much so that in the twelfth year of prophethood on the occasion of Hajj, a deputation of seventy-five people met the Holy Prophet, Salallahu alayhi wa alayhi wasallam, in the darkness of night. These people not only accepted Islam, but also offered to give him and his followers a home. As this was a most epic-making opportunity provided by Allah, the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam took advantage of it. The significance of this offer was quite clear to the people of Yathrab. 
and they fully realized that this was not an invitation to a mere fugitive, but to the messenger of Allah so that he should become their leader and ruler. Likewise, they knew that they were not inviting the Muslim refugees to give them shelter from persecution, but to assemble them from all over the country for their integration with themselves to form an organized community. Thus the offer of the people of Yathrab was to make Yathrab the city of Islam. Accordingly, the Holy Prophet, Salallahu alayhi wa alayhi wasallam, accepted their invitation and made it the first city of Islam in Arabia. Here we stop the first part. Please stay connected with Jemile TV. Thanks.